Welcome, I'm Terry McGill, um, coming to you from Portland, Oregon. And tonight, as promised, is the keys to financial abundance. And respectfully, respectfully and regardless of the um, um, different challenges, we're going to just charge right on through. And um, let's see. We are recording good. Uh, so the keys to financial abundance. There are three major keys, and I'll show you the uh, slides that I fortunately saved in another place because they are not here on, uh, on Zoom like I put them in. So um, number one is awareness. If we don't have financial abundance, then there's there's some reason for it. And you know, what the heck is it? So we have to have awareness. So there's there's either something blocking it or blocking us from accessing it. It can be negative beliefs. Um, it can be lack of service or not providing benefits to others. Um, so we need to know how to clear the blockages, how to bring in the, in prosperity. And for those of you who you've been doing service, you've, you've been doing your job, doing your work, doing your 50%, and still nothing or what you desire hasn't appeared yet. I understand that. I worked for almost seven years on a project and, uh, and, it's it's still in the waiting room, uh, created, but in the waiting room. So the reasons are there can be deeper karma or negative information that's stopping us from whatever we're doing and for it to manifest. It might be that there's not enough service yet. And I had to look at how much service was I offering. and. Um, you know, the answer I got back was there's three reasons. Part of it was not enough service. Um, part of it was um, deeper karma. <laughs> um, part of it was not enough virtue. Now, virtue is created by our service. Um, sorry, I'm rattling papers around here. Uh, and my voice doesn't want to work. So let me bring up and share screen with you. And we'll see if this will work. It's not. That is so strange. I just saved it there and it's not coming up. So fortunately, I still should have it on. Uh, I copied it and pasted it. I mean, I copied it. Here we go. This is very interesting. So this is my experience with uh, with whiteboard. And I can move this around, but I can't move the edges. So the keys to financial abundance. So I was mentioning them. I've got to shrink this other thing so I can get to some of my controls on the side. I am using PowerPoint next time. <laughs> Oh, man. So why won't this rotate? Huh. Okay, can somebody tell me, speak out loud, can you see where it says keys to financial abundance and what might be stopping us? Yes, that's very clear, Terry. Yes, you see it. That's really interesting. Now, if I scroll down, are you seeing it scroll down? Uh, no. Okay. There, then I see what's happening. Um, all right. I don't see what's happening, but I'm going to do this, come back in. It's interesting. I've never had this experience before, but I've got it now. Let me do it this way. All right. 
now. Can you see it now? Yep. Oh, it's a Google Doc. So I went over to, uh, if, you, if, if any of you are curious, I went over to OneDrive and opened that up and shared that screen. Fortunately, I had saved everything over here. So the keys to financial abundance, what can be stopping us from having it are negative beliefs. Some of our negative beliefs are, I don't know the correct way or the best way or the right way to make to earn money. It's not working. The second reason is I don't use what I know. And candidly, I went through that. Uh, I had been blocking my awareness. The third reason we, uh, uh, these are negative beliefs. Um, and they're also negative information. So number one, you know, we think we don't know the correct or the best way, and we may not. And we may not use what we know. And the reason is that we've got a belief that we need to be better at what we do, or we don't deserve to succeed. We don't deserve adequate finances. Um, and then there's another area which is not offering enough service to bring financial abundance. A part of that is we could be not offering the desired service, what our clients desire. The second reason is we're not offering enough value. Whatever we're offering, they desire, but we're not giving them enough. The third reason is we aren't properly communicating to the client or the prospect. And as I'm reading these slides, it's like, wait a minute, that was really clear when I wrote it, but it's not that clear to me right now. So not properly communicating our blockages. So we may have to scroll back up if this will work, there we go. We may ne have negative beliefs, negative information, karma, that stop us from communicating, that stop us from communicating with ourselves when we go, okay, that's very clear. Let me write this down. Not offering desired service. Um, there's, you know, there's more to it uh, than that. And I'm going to, in a moment, ask an expert on it, but let me complete. Um, so not offering the desired service, you know, what they want. So we're not getting enough people come to us because um, we haven't reached the person with, we haven't touched them. What do, what do they want? We just aren't clear on it. Um, the, th the second is not offering enough of it if we know. The third is not properly communicating to them. Now, I've, I've struggled with language. I can talk woo-woo language forever. But to communicate to the general public, I've been retraining myself for six years, seven years now. Well, six, once I became aware of it. The fourth reason is we aren't asking enough people to give us enough service. Um, to, to, we're not asking enough people that we want to give our service to. I hope that was more clear. So I have asked Alan Luke to come tonight. And um, Alan is a web funnel designer. He's He's just absolutely wizard. And uh, there's Alan right now. Could you highlight Alan? He's up there on my screen in the top left. Um, dark hair, glasses, um, maroonish or dark red uh, shirt on. So let me see if I can uh, add spotlight. Yes, there it is. Hurley, wherever Hurley is. Uh, welcome, Alan. Hey, Terry, how are you? Alan hey, is from Toronto. 
And I took a class, several of us, a beta class that Alan designed and held our hands and clarified everything that I have stated about my issues, so everything that was there on the screen. So I'm going to drop off. And Alan, would you jump in? Yeah, absolutely. Uh, thank you, Terry. Uh, so thank you so much for inviting me to speak uh, today. So let me share a little bit about myself. Uh, so my name is Alan from Toronto, and I'm a spiritual business coach. And what I want to do over the next 10 minutes is just to share with you how launching my spiritual uh, business coaching business has allowed me to find my purpose. So you see, all my life, I have been exposed to different business opportunities. Um, the first one was when I was involved in a multi-level marketing company. I mean, I'm sure some of us are familiar with the MLM. And at that point, I was actually just chasing for the money because somebody mentioned that when you join that business, you could build a huge downline and you could earn a lot of money, right? Um, but that didn't really happen as, as after I enrolled my friends and family is um, I went on to something else, right? I kept doing that multiple times, right? Each time somebody presented an opportunity and they said that you're going to make great money out of it. So I was always chasing over the money, but it wasn't ever coming from a heart center space, right? So, but what I found was coaching or helping others was something I've always been passionate about, right? From helping small businesses uh, design their website to working with uh, students. So I also mentor uh, a group of students in my college to help them uh, with their entrepreneurship journey and their entrepreneurship project. So I've always really have a passion in that. But it was back in late 2020. Uh, it was August 2020 when I'd gone through a very confrontational separation and divorce process with my ex-partner. And that was the exact reason that actually got me into spirituality. Uh, so somebody, another Dao Hen, uh practitioner, um, invited me to, to talk to her. Um, it was somebody I know from, from on Facebook. And on that call, she gave me a Dao Hen blessing. So instantly, I felt much more calmer, much more peaceful. And I was just more open to, oh, I'm not sure what you're doing, but I felt great. And the following week, the Toronto Center had a Dao Hen's introduction workshop. And that's where I attended. And I felt that there was a calling that my soul was craving for for love, right? A love that has been neglected for a long time. And through my spiritual journey, I've learned a lot about self-love, honoring self-boundaries. It also helped me heal the liver pain that I developed because of the anger issue, right? As we learn with the five elements. So through the process, I've met a lot of wonderful healers, uh, spiritual practitioners. Uh, they just help me a lot. But as I was talking to them, I realized that is they are so gifted. They took so much training. They are just so magnificent in, in their gifts. But they actually are afraid to launch a business, right? They are actually, they don't want to charge anyone. And, and that's why I felt a calling to, oh, let me help, let me help them to start the business. So that's really how that came all about. Um, is so I want to share with you a couple of tips that you know that it could help help you inspire you to start your own business too. Number one is actually help is to develop your origin story, right? That is that story. So for my case, it was when I went through one of the darkest moments in my life where I've gone through that separation process, when I've gone through um, you know, the self-healing, right? Acceptance in the spirituality for me to open up my heart to, to healing, right? So that was really where I began into 
the into my healing journey. So as I shared this story with others, it helped them realize that your what was once your your mess, you know, one of the darkest moments in your life or your challenges is really a point of inspiration for others, right? So now I can share that story with, with other people, especially with, um, with, with the spiritual healers and also other divorced men that are going through the exact same thing is I can show them the path, you know, what I've gone through in terms of my healing journey, right? Through forgiveness practice, through opening the heart by, by chanting the, the, the mantras and also honoring that self-love and self-boundary. So number one is know your story, right? I'm sure all of us right now have a unique story on how you got into spirituality. Rather, it was to heal that anxiety that you have been going on for a long time. Rather, it is that trauma or rather it is that pain or that emotional or physical pain that you've gone through. So whatever that was, right? That is part of that, your story to, to, you know, as part of your healing story. Now, when you look at your origin story, you can figure it out who would be your ideal clients, right? So, so in my case, it would be spiritual healers, or also it could be those who gone through a separation divorce, right? Because I've gone through that, I have that experience, right? So my origin story connect with them, right? So if you're looking to appeal to everybody, then you want to focus on who would connect with your story, right? Um, and the next thing I wish Terry touched upon was all about the mindset, right? When I first started, I wasn't sure how people would perceive me. I wasn't sure if it would work, right? And I wasn't sure if I was good enough right? So I was concerned about whether I'm good enough and whether other people will listen to me. So there's a lot of self-doubt, a, um, a lot of blockages in my mind. So I had to work through that, right? Because the only, so the one thing I've learned was when you've gone through something yourself, that is something, an experience that nobody can take away, that you're not making it up. It's because you've gone through that, you stepped through that, right? So when you share that story with others, right, you're sharing with experience, you share with conviction, right? When I stand in front of other divorced men right now, I can share with them exactly what I've gone through. I can share with them the, net, the amount of therapists I saw that I did not get result. I can share with them the, the, the emotions, the overwhelmed emotions that they experience, right, as you're going through that journey, but I can also show them and inspire them to walk a path of healing, right? Open their heart to the possibility of being healed, right? So that's where the heart connection is made. And finally, the last point is if you currently have a spiritual business, one of the things you want to is to develop is that confidence and conviction to charge what you're worth. Right, you know, most of us starting out, we're 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 just concerned. Rather, that is too much, right? Can I charge that much, or maybe I should just give it away for, for free, right? But it is so important to realize that is if people pay, when your client pay, they pay attention, right? If you give it away for free all the time, a lot of times they don't value it, right? So that also comes with your experience, your, your conviction, right? When you can show them the path of transformation from point A to point B, because you've been through that, you have that confidence and conviction to be able to charge that transformation journey, right? How many people pay thousands of dollars in therapy, but given the gift that we have, we know that when we take them through that journey, the point A from point B, they will see result, right? They will see that transformation. So those are the three quick, quick tips that I want to share just so that can help you inspire you to start your business, start your healing business. And most importantly, just to start, right? One of the things I've learned from my mentor many years ago was you don't have to get it right, 
but you just have to get it going, right? And we have a very supportive, supportive community here. So just go for it, right? And, and like Terry said tonight, it's all about helping you transform through those blockages so that you can reach those financial abundance that you truly deserve. So thank you, Terry. Alan, stay here a moment. Do you have a special gift for everybody that's watching? Uh, yeah, I actually did a presentation. Yes, thank you, Paula, for posting that. So I did a presentation last week, um, and I actually walked through um, the, the, the three framework. I'm actually starting a spiritual business. Uh, so I actually take you through the six steps process and I actually go, go a little deeper into how do you develop your origin story, right? Where you have been, what got you that transformation, that turning point and where you're going. So that's going to be the story that could truly connect with your audience. So when people click on that, they'll be able to... Uh to find what is it you're offering correct correct wonderful alan thank you so much thank you Terry. i wanted you to share tonight because thank of you. Uh, my experience with those six or seven or eight weeks i appreciate so thank it, you very much thank you so the first step get my cursor out of the way uh the first step is awareness and the second step is once we have a sense of, boy, you know, I, there must be some blockages there, then how do we clear those? And so there's ways to clear it. And we'll try it the low tech way. Here we go. Um, so there's three different ways that we clear the blockages. And that should be an S. So fortunately, I can just add it. <laughs> so first is a forgiveness practice. I believe everyone here is aware of um, Master Shaw's teaching being live streamed. Wonderful. I thought we were earlier. It must have been unrecorded. Anyway, we'll deal with that too. So forgiveness practice, there's actually hundreds of forgiveness practices. My introduction to them was about 1976. I'd gone to a week-long, yes, I'm older than dirt. <laughs> so I'd gone to a week-long meditation retreat with this, um, he turned out to be the, the head of the Sufi order in the West. And he's got a really long name. He just said, just call me Pure Vilayat. Um, Pure meant elder. Uh, and Vilayat was his first name. His uh, full name is Hazrat Pur Murshid Vilayat Khan Chisti. Uh, took me a moment to recall that. So what he had us do, he, uh, he had a bunch of assistants, and they were hand, there were 300 of us there. Um, and we were given a handful of small slips of paper and a pencil. This was back in the pencil days. No gel pens back then. And we were to write down person, place, or experience that, that we were still holding in our awareness. And we were stuck. We, we had it. We couldn't let go of it. So write, you know, don't do that. But think about it. Think of one thing. And what is one thing for you? Facebook is now streaming live. Good. Um, think of one thing for you. The most important, let's say, emotion that you have right now. So there's five major uh, areas of emotions. Um, in traditional Chinese medicine, the wood element would be anger and all of the derivatives of the sin, synonyms. I'm not angry, I'm just frustrated. Like, yeah, okay, I would call that angry. Um, the, the second area is a fire element and uh, there's yin and yang on this one. Um, there's either overexcitement or depression. Um, the third area is earth element in traditional Chinese medicine and that's worry. Our, 
or all of the, you know, running through our mind all the time. Um, the fourth one is related to the lungs, especially prevalent the last two years. It's grief or sadness. And, you know, it's related to the... Um, Girl. Can someone please mute um, whoever's speaking? Thank you. Um, except for me. <laughs> so um, the metal element uh, relates to lungs. And I had COVID. Did you? But I bet you know someone or more than one that did. And my experience was long COVID. And I, I was told when I ask, it's like, wait a minute, this is going on and on and on. What's wrong? And the doctors didn't know. They still are trying to find out because there's variations. It's showing up differently. Um, yeah, there's variants of COVID. And then the long COVID is, it depends on which variant you have. And still, they aren't really sure. So I, I checked with some spiritual guides. And they said, I need to do bring up and heal grief and sadness. Must have been a lot of it because it took over six weeks. It just, um, I couldn't get out of bed some days for more than an hour or two. Um, it, it was, you know, so if grief and sadness is up for you, um, that's a mental element for your mind to know. And then the fifth area is um, water element. And that's fear, and uh, not anxiety. Anxiety is hard, even though we can. I see a blending sometimes. So, how can we clear these? Writing down something on a slip of paper. You know, we can be angry at somebody. We write their name on a slip of paper. That's what we did. There were three hundred of us, and there was this long file of people going up to this big metal brazier. And it had a fire going on it. And so we would drop in one or 15 pieces of paper. And some of them, they'd dump in so much and put the fire out and had to start it up again. It took a long time. That didn't work very well. It didn't work at all for me, as far as I could tell. The two major kinds of forgiveness practice that I'm familiar with now that are very effective. One is the Hawaiian Ho'oponopono style. Very great. There's four statements that you repeat related to a person. It works, works really well. When I do readings at New Renaissance Bookstore, I find out about 60% of the people that come to see me and they and I hear that they need to do a forgiveness practice. What works for them best is Ho'oponopono, which surprised me because what works best for me is what Dr. and Master Jigong Shah teaches. And that is. I'll lead you in that right now. So I invite you to close your eyes and breathe. Now you're breathing already, but you may not be focusing on it. So focus on your breathing. Just say, dear my mind, I love you. Observe how my body breathes itself. Don't change anything, just observe. So on every inhale, with your eyes closed, you can put a hand over the center of your chest, your heart chakra. That's body power. And the breathing, just when you inhale, dear my mind, I love you. Observe how my body breathes itself. We're sending an order to our mind. So let's just do that for like five breaths. I'll do it, I'll be silent. On the exhale, just let it go, let the air go. No thinking, feel. What we're doing is we're moving from the head into the heart. The mind cannot connect with what's in our unconscious, but our heart can. There's another level above that and we'll work with that now. So with your eyes still closed, and you can keep a hand on your heart, 
heart chakra. If the other hand's not holding a phone, you can put it on your body, face, palm facing the body, both of them, just below the navel. So one over the heart chakra, center of your chest, and one just below the navel. You can put it on the navel. Now, still be aware of your breathing. Your body continues to breathe. Isn't it wonderful? We go to sleep. I remember my first awareness is like, well, wait a minute. I don't think about breathing when I'm sleeping. It must work automatically. So every in-breath, just be aware of your breathing. Tell your mind. Give it something to do. Dear my mind, I love you. You're so aware. How is my body breathing itself? And then we can say, dear, now this is our unconscious we're dealing with now, so we don't know what's going on there. So we make it global. Dear, anyone I've ever harmed, I deeply apologize. And we don't have to imagine what we might have done. Don't need to go there. That's the mind wanting, well, what is it? What did I do? When? Was it a past life? Let it go. Just dear, dear, all the souls, anyone, dear Mother Earth, if I've ever harmed you, anything I've ever done that harms someone or something, I deeply apologize. I'm really, really sorry. Please forgive me. If it's ancestral karma, then please forgive my ancestors too. Dear my ancestors, please join me. Do this forgiveness practice with me. Thank you. So inhaling. Imagine that light appears magically in the center of your heart chakra with every breath. Every breath we can receive if we focus on it, we do anyway. So become aware of receiving a fresh infusion of life force, light in our heart chakra. As we bring up from our unconscious, think of it as darkness or shadow, and we bring in light by being aware of our breathing. Light, when you, when you turn on a light, when you go into a dark room, the darkness leaves. Yeah, so dear all the souls, anyone, anything I've harmed in any lifetime, I'm so sorry. Please forgive me. Thank you. There's a second part to it. Dear, all of the souls, anything and everything that's blocking me from financial abundance, I forgive you completely and unconditionally. Now, I don't know about you, but that's very difficult for me when I first started. My mentor worked with me for three years. And finally, one day, I began to have an experience that I had been told was there. So don't think about what my day experienced, just every in-breath. Imagine that light appearing. So some people see it coming down through their crown chakra. Wonderful. Whatever, whatever our mind shows us, or maybe we don't see, maybe we just feel. So notice, is the temperature of your body the same? Every in-breath, light's coming in to you. Now it's important not just to ask forgiveness, we have to do the other part that was so hard for me. Dear all the souls that have harmed me, everything that's blocking me from financial abundance, I am so sorry. I'm saying financial abundance because that's the focus tonight. Keep a focus. Financial abundance. Now that can mean why don't I have a decent job? Or why don't I have a job I like? Or why does my job not pay me enough money? 
or how come how come money isn't coming to me? Well, it's not magical. We'll get to that. Uh, well, I'm going to do some magic. I'm going to ask for magic to be done later on in a few minutes. But right now, it's the forgiveness practice. First, we ask for forgiveness, and now we're offering it. So you can repeat me if you would like to. Dear all the souls that are blocking me from financial abundance or my ancestors in this lifetime and all lifetimes, that's the deeper part. We don't just don't focus on now. Everything that's blocking me, I forgive you. I forgive you completely and unconditionally. That was a blocking point for me, too. I figured if I forgive them, then they wouldn't do it again. They can come back, whatever it is. It's a deeper level. Our unconscious has infinite levels. So we're, we're using soul power. We're giving a message, dear. And we can invoke higher power than just us. And let's do that. I'll give you an example. Dear, the divine God, Allah, Yahweh. Dear Buddha, dear Jesus, dear Guan Yin, dear Isis, dear Pele, whatever it is that you believe in that's bigger than us. Tao, source, infinite intelligence. Da, mean the biggest. Can you? Forgive me. Can you help me? Thank you so much. It's important to offer gratitude. Thank you so much. We can also use mantra. Mantra is very powerful. I remember learning my first mantra, geez, 40 years ago. Om Mane Padme Hom. Om Mane Padme Hum. Om Mane Padme Hum. That's the mantra that Avalikoteshvara, I know I mispronounced that. <laughs> um, this was the, the form, the incarnation of the uh, goddess Kuan Yin, the goddess of compassion that we know now in India, still worshipped in India. And that was the mantra. Uh, it's pronounced differently. Uh, I learned it all, Mane Padme Hum, but um, others pronounce it Hum, and in, in Tibet, I think they pronounce it um, Ham. I, I, you know, it's just different cultures, different languages. But then, in uh, when Kuan Yin was brought to China by the Buddhist monk, um, many stories about that, wonderful stories, but. The mantra became what we know now as Kuan Yin's Enlightenment mantra. Wang Mani Ba Ma Hong. 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 So, what are we asking for? We don't know it, but what, what happens when we're doing forgiveness practice? We're really asking to be enlightened, to become more aware, to be released from our bondage, however you think about it. So mantra is a very important way. Why? Because the higher the frequency and vibration of the mantra, the more holy it is, the higher its frequency and vibration. And when we chant it, it changes the frequency and vibration in our body. When you do it enough, you'll experience it. I didn't believe that. I did it enough. I begin to experience it. I still do. And it's not, you know, we're doing it a very short amount of time. You may be starting to perspire. You may not. For me, 
<laughs> for me, it took about 12 years. Um, fortunately, now there are much more powerful practices. This forgiveness practice is really powerful. It, and, you know, don't take my word for it. Let's, um, let's say thank you to all the holy beings that, that we called, anyone we called. Thank you so much for blessing me, for, for clearing some of my stuff. Stuff is one of those general terms that mean that's the unconscious. I don't know what's there. It's just stuff. It's blocking me. So thank you, thank you, thank you. And who would like to unmute and share what's go what went on for you during the forgiveness practice? And if nothing did, just say nothing. Anyone? Yes, Terry, Vanita here. Hi. Hello, Vanita. So it was beautiful. I think, Terry, the way or uh, the breathing uh, that you guided us to, that made the difference to me because otherwise I do a forgiveness practice daily. But I think this was really far more powerful to just, you know, observe the breath and speak to your mind to observe. That part was really very nice for me. So thank, thank you, so, you much. so much. Thank you. So the one of the things that Venita mentioned, um, or didn't actually, um, I was thinking it. <laughs> We're in a group. Any time, in fact, I learned this 50 years ago. In the Christian Bible, it says, where two or more of ye are gathered together in my name's sake, there I am also. Um, that's one way of saying when we get together, with a group of like-minded people, and we're doing the same thing. And the interesting thing, it doesn't matter whether it's good things or bad things, the power increases. Uh, Hitler knew this. Um, I was so surprised to find that out. Um, so for us, what we did was we focused on divine beings. We may, some of you may have called different ones. Um, I'm, I'm really aware of Kuan Yin, uh, and, and there's Jesus and Mother Mary, and um, yeah, and as I as I th think about it and focus on it, then I have the impression of, and I'm not seeing them, I'm seeing like fuzzy shapes. Uh, so when we call these different beings, what happens is their frequency and vibration is raising ours. Dr. Rulian Shu, the uh, I call her the singing quantum physicist. Um, so I know most of you know her. She's such a powerful individual. And she brought to me the concept of, and you too maybe, of connection. We have to connect. Master Shah tried to teach me that through one of his books, Mind Over Matter in 2014. I just didn't get it. Until finally one day I was reading chapter 10 and it was like, oh, wait a minute now. If I have to open my heart, speak from my heart, sing, from, maybe it means, maybe my heart, maybe I'll pretend it has a mouth. So I literally would look, I got a crick in my neck because I did it for like two weeks. I'm looking down at my physical heart and I'm thinking, I'm imagining it has a mouth. And it's chanting these sacred mantras. And um, after about two weeks, I literally, <coughs> I literally went into the washroom in front of the mirror and I pulled up my t-shirt and I expected that my left chest would be well-developed, muscular again, like it was when I was in my 20s. No, I was aware what I'd done. I had, to, what I was experiencing was the energetic field. I had built it over the two weeks by doing that much practice. I'm doing this every day. <laughs> Sore neck, looking down. You don't have to look down. <laughs> but it, I had to get out of my head. I was in my head all my life. I didn't know how to open the heart. I didn't even know what it meant. I'd been to opening your heart workshops literally for 15, 20 years. And, and my heart was opening 
little by little by little, but I didn't understand it. Now, what it means is feel. So I invite you again, close your eyes and put one hand on, put the palm on the center of your chest, the right hand, and then your fingers will be over the physical heart. One of Master Shaw's teachings was, still is, that the physical heart and the metaphysical heart of the heart chakra overlap by like 90%. Like, I didn't know that. <laughs> he has so much wisdom. So with our hand there, imagine that your hand is a sphere of energy and it's overlapping the, your heart chakra and a lot of your physical heart. And they're all connecting. Ooh, there's that word connect again. So then we can ask heaven, holy beings, name one, name 20. Well, don't take that long. So just pick a favorite, your most important saint or Buddha. So I'll just use Guan Yin, dear Guan Yin. I so greatly appreciate you. Could you connect me? with my heart. Thank you so much. And I noticed the change in my voice, like, wow. So we can talk from our head and I can read things and I blah, 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 blah. But that's my head. I'm not connected with my heart. When I connect with my heart, my voice has changed. And so, Please join me silently or aloud with Kuan Yin's Enlightenment Mantra. Wang Mani Ba Ma Hong. Wang Mani Ba Ma Hong. Kuan Yin, could you bless us with your Enlightenment Mantra to bring us more awareness about why we don't have financial abundance? Thank you so much. Wang Mani Ba Ma Hong. Wang Mani Ba Ma Hong. So this is one of the ways that we can clear the blockages that are keeping us from financial abundance. And I'm going to offer a demonstration now. And so I invite you to put a number in the chat room. And there's so few people here tonight that I'm amazed. Um, so we'll just pick a number between. I better write one down first. Uh, let me get a piece of paper and I'll do it where you can see it. Okay. A number between. One and 62, instead of one in a hundred, right? A number between one and 62. And go ahead and put them in the chat room. I see two or three popping up. One, two, three, four, golly. If you'd like, maybe I should tell you what the blessing is. Um, I have, where is it? Here we go. I will share screen there. Whoops, that's not what was supposed to pop up. Let me try another one. Um, I have to store things on my computer, um, each in a different folder, and uh, or they or they change. So where is one that I wanted? Hmm, it's interesting that uh, changed on me. Let's try this and see if this one will work.
no, it transformed after that picture from, I think it was 2017 when we had a Dow hands uh, training at a friend's house. So this, um, uh, we've got another one at least. So the financial blessing, uh, this is using Da Chang Sheng. Um, I have a calligraphy card, Da Chang Sheng, that um, Master Shah gave me a full set in, what was it, 2019? Yeah, when I was at the uh, Divine Channel Retreat, there were six of us that had been uh, named. Um, two of us never did receive the transmission. It kept not happening. Um, but we all got a full set of the 10 greatest quality cards and Master Shaw put big blessings in them. Um, they're really powerful. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So almost half of us have posted a number. Ah, there's three more, eight, nine, ten. All right. So I'm not posting and I'm one of them. So anyone else that has not yet posted, um, I'm just going to count down mentally backwards while I'm talk, um, and then we'll stop and I'll offer the transmission. Uh, actually, it's not a transmission. I am going to trace my uh, calligraphy card and uh, tracing. If you didn't know, um, Master Shah says you can chant. And if you chant for an hour, we'll call that one hour of chanting. But if you're tracing a calligraphy card for 10 minutes, no, for six minutes, it's 10 times as powerful to trace a calligraphy card, which just blows me away. So can you, can you all see this card? So this is uh, Da I, and notice the dollar sign up here. I'm, I'm going to use this one because this also has a special, this is finances only, special blessing that Master Shah put into it. It's Kai Guang. So I'm actually going to use that one because that's the guidance that I got just now. So I'm going to trace that. And now will someone check and see who is closest to this number? Can you? Let's see if you can see it. Here we go. That's the number. 14. I wrote it down so I wouldn't forget it and so you could see I didn't make it up. <laughs> so who's closest to 14? I see a 17 down there. Paula is 12. Paula is 12. There's an 11. Oh. And oh. there's a 12. It looks like it's Paula. I think it's me, Terry. Yeah. Well, well, my gosh, <laughs> how wonderful for Paula. So if you can, um, please come on screen. And if, if it doesn't work, that's okay, because I know you're working in the background. There you are. All right. And I will spotlight you because I know how to do that. So. Paula, uh, now everybody that is here, if you desire, just say, I know, well, you may not know, but let me share. When you, when, when a blessing is given, it's like the sun, it shines on the earth, right? It shines everywhere else too. So all you have to do is close your eyes. You'll get more if you close your eyes. and ask, I would really like to receive a blessing from this, <laughs> yeah, Kai Guang. Kai Guang means increase the light or bring the light. Um, and so this is the Da I card right here. And this is the one, other side, it's got the dollar sign on it. That's, I, I stuck it on there with a piece of tape. I didn't write it on it. Uh, in case somebody was wondering if I had defaced a calligraphy card, like, nope. But this is, <laughs> hey, you know, I had somebody accuse me of making a mess of one once. 
and Master Shah said uh, he, when he was commenting on somebody having uh, a lot of notes in their books, he says, good, they're using it. <laughs> anyway, all of you who would like to receive a splash or a flash, this will be a long flash because I'm going to trace this for two minutes. Uh, and this is this is pretty empowered. So let me get to my timer on my phone. There it is. Go to timer. Um, I'm going to use a stopwatch so it won't make as much noise. All right, Paula, are you ready? You're muted, so I know you're ready. It's okay. You don't have to say anything. So, dear, this empowered, specially empowered Da I calligraphy card, please offer a soul healing blessing to Paula Dodge that we can see on our screen again. And please offer financial blessing as appropriate as I trace. Blessing begins. Everybody else, ask for the splash. Imagine yourself. Imagine the old, remember the old cameras that had those flash bulbs that would make all, they'd turn all crinkly after they flashed? You may not be that old. Just imagine that there's a hundred of them going off all around you and then more and more. As I trace, I'm going to chat also. I better not, my, my voice isn't holding up well. So it's only been 30 seconds. There's a minute and a half to go. Are the flash bulbs going off? Are you feeling the light, the heat? Are you experiencing becoming lighter? I'm sensing it. There's one chunky area that I perceive it's like a big lump of anthracite coal. Um, I used to shovel coal. That's a long time ago. Um, it was part of my job at school. I went to a free school. So I'm tracing this Kai Guan Da I, greatest love calligraphy card. And Paul is receiving. 100% of the blessing. It's like a spotlight. Except it's more than a spotlight. It's like the sun. It's going to everyone. Die, die. Die, die. I've been tracing it. I had it below. You couldn't see it. How? I just noticed that we went three seconds past two minutes. So there's a little bonus for everybody. How, how, how? Thank you. Die. Greatest love. Thank you, the original of this card. And thank you, the Kai Guang card that Master Shah put the extra blessing into. So, Paula, um, would you like a little reading? That's a yes, yes, yes. <laughs> okay. Because I was getting a message. Like an iceberg, which is only 10% visible, in your life, financial flourishing may not be even 10% visible, all that you're receiving. And so I am the soul of this particular card. And what I want to share with you, there's another practice that Terry did not mention yet, gratitude. I invite you, and those of you that are listening also, it'll be more powerful if you keep or buy a small notebook. One of those that used to be 19 cents and are now $1.19. Very small, wire bound on one side. 
And every day, write down three things that you're grateful for. And do this for 21 days. Now, here's the rule. The next day, you cannot write down what you have already written. And the third day, same rule. For 21 days, stretch. Expand your awareness. You have all received a blessing through me, as Terry traced, for awareness. Paula has been englobed with light, greater light in many aspects of her being. She has the ability, you have the ability also, for you receive the splash or the flash. To become more aware, you've had, you might say, blockages removed. However, you have to do your part. Tian Ren Gaban, Tian Heaven, Ren Human, Ga each, and Ban 50%. So heaven and earth do half and half. You've received half, dear Paula. Others of you have received a percent or two or three. Several of you received two of you. Two of you received 3% of what Paula received. Even 1% is a gift. It's my gift to each of you. How? And so for clarity, after I opened my eyes, it was, still was not Terry talking. It was just coming out of my mouth. So Paula, would you unmute and what was your experience? Um, light, light and light and a little more light. Then there was this big blast of light. Oh, it was seriously, it was just, that's just what I felt like, like little kind of explosions going on through my body. And 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 kind of a a lifting up, almost like kind of dogs, almost kind of like a levitation kind of thing. It was really powerful, really beautiful. I am so grateful. Thank you, Divine Del Source. And thank wonderful. you. Wonderful. Thank you. Beautiful offering. Happy birthday. Thank you. So I say happy birthday because this is like a spiritual birthday. Um it's a it's a big shift for for Paula, and um, yeah, not just for Paula. And I says, okay, rest of them too. I'm like yes. <laughs> um, so it's been posted in the chat room. Uh, I will offer this to anyone who desires. Let me scroll back up. Uh, financial blessing with the Da Chong Shang greatest flourishing calligraphy and I will trace it um and I didn't uh we didn't I didn't want to put too much into the the description of it but I will trace that for 10 days um and I'll be guided as to how much to trace I've learned not to say I'm going to do this for 10 minutes or I'm going to do because I get the guidance like and I go wait a minute but I'm supposed to do more that's enough I'm like okay sorry so I will follow guidance. Now, if you're not in the United States, there are country discounts posted also. So um, you can see it's 150 in the United States. Um, and 10 days of this tracing. Um, wow. Anyway, anyone who would like to receive that, just post. Um, and uh, then... Or speak up and say, me, me, me. <laughs> That'd be appropriate time to, to be involved with me, me, me. Um, so while you think about that, because you have, what time is it? 8.07? We've got almost an hour. Um, but there's another uh, part of the teaching that I haven't done yet. So let's move over to that. Um, here we go. I'll share the screen again. So forgiveness practice is one way to clear the blockages. 
tracing down calligraphy, uh, you can do that yourself. You can do it using, if you have the Dow Calligraphy Healing Field Book, uh, Da I calligraphy is on the back of it. You may have a calligraphy card or more than one. Those are powerful too. You may have, um, oh, and I chant, number three was chanting sacred mantra. So I also want to show you one other option. And let me uh, find out where I stashed it. There it is. Um, and I will share screen again and lead you in another practice. This is a night of uh, much benefit bonuses for all of you. I'm going to bring up the Tao Bay calligraphy practice. Bay means back and Tao is source. So I hope you're able to see that on your screen. And Master Shaw is going to chant for us. So we don't have to. Are you ready for this? Ask for a financial blessing. Ask for the back of your finances, financial blockages to receive a blessing. Somebody tell Please me if you can hear that. Please put your mind in the area in your back. Visual. Sorry, I'm trying to get the sound up. Deep in here. up. Dow back. There we go. Deep inhale. Dow back. Somebody please post in the chat so I can know if you can Deep see and hear this. Deep inhale. Dow back. Deep inhale. Or unmute. Tell me if that's easier. Bay. Great. Thank you. Deep inhale. Dow back. Notice on the Deep inhale. inhale. The light comes in your nose and down. Dow bay. And it comes in from the calligraphy also. Deep inhale. So both of those have Dow back. Deep inhale. Dow bay. Deep inhale. Dow back. Deep inhale. Dow Bay Deep Inhale Dow Back Deep Inhale Dow Bay Deep Inhale so let me pause it for a moment. We want to use what Master Shaw calls soul power or invocation or, or stating a message. So we're speaking to the Dao Bay calligraphy. Dear Dao Bay calligraphy, please give me a blessing for my finances. Now he's taught that the Dao Bay or Dao Source back is not just for your back. I've heard him say the backside of your heart, the backside of your liver, the backside of your eyes. Um, so it's a calligraphy. It's a Tao source calligraphy. And everything and everyone wants to serve. And this is an immense uh, consciousness. So once we've done our statement, though, we don't have to repeat it. We don't have to heal my back, heal my finances, heal my this. Just enjoy. All right. Back to it. Dow back. Deep inhale. Dow back. Deep inhale. 
Call back. Deep inhale. Dao bay. Deep inhale. Dao back. Deep inhale. Dao bay. Deep inhale. Dao back. Deep inhale. Dao bay. Three more times. Deep inhale. Dao back. Deep inhale. Dao bay. Deep inhale. Dao back. And so this is found if you have the Dao calligraphy, Dao Bay book. It's a paperback, and included in it is the link to online Dao Bay. And that was what I was taking you through there or turning on for you. There are two other books. Now we've moved into step three. Step three, step one was um, awareness, you know, what's blocking us? Uh, step two was to clear the blockages. And step three, we need to increase our virtue. We need to bring in virtue, financial virtue. And so one of the ways is to use the Dao Bay calligraphy. Um, another way, um, looking for step number three so I can bring it up for you. There we go. Let me clear that out of the way. And then I will share my screen again. There it is, good. So key number three, we've already done a practice with the special animation that's one of two that's in the Dao Bay book. There's also the Dao Calligraphy Healing Field book, TCHF. And then there's the other one that I can't pronounce it in Chinese, but it's for the healing and prevention of anxiety and depression. So those three books have the special animations like you saw. The Dao Calligraphy Healing Field book, if I could only have one book, it would be that one. You know, if I was on a desert island and I had some kind of a device and access to the internet, I'd want that book because there's 20 different practices in there. They're for every aspect of life. But one of them is finances. How's that, huh? So you can do a step number two. You can do practices with special animations. Some of you know this. And some of you are in financial, maybe not hardship, but you're not flourishing. And so what I would ask you is, are you practicing every day? Are you using the tools that we've been given? If not, then something's blocking it. Negative beliefs, not enough uh, benefits offered to others, um, not enough forgiveness practice, not enough tracing, not enough blessings. So the number one here, actually there's two number ones. Number one is receive high level blessings. Um, so I'm going to offer another one. You've already seen one. Um, and I'll, I'll choose someone, um, or you'll choose yourself or the divine will. Um, don't post yet, please. 
<laughs> so most of you or many of you that I know have Tao healing hands uh, transmissions. Uh, some of you may have divine healing hands. I've got three of the levels that were offered before it became Tao hands. Uh, and I've got two levels, well, actually three levels uh, as a Tao hands ambassador. Um, that's the third level. Um, and then I've got uh, Dao da da I, and then the first level. So um, we can use our Dao healing hands to bless ourselves, to offer blessings for ourselves. We can offer blessings to others um, and say to them, if it's appropriate, and sometimes it is, but we have blockages to asking, we can ask them, we can say, you know, would it benefit you to clear whatever the issue is? And if you have anything past level one, Dao hands, you've got the ability to offer Dao hands blessings to others. Um, when I do it, it varies because I check on guidance, but it could be $75, it could be $100, $125, $150. Uh, once it was $450, um, it's just, it depends on our guidance. And it depends on the karma, the negative blockages that are being removed. And of course, we never say we're removing karma, but something changes, call it what you want. So number two, you know about, we've just used the practice in the Dao Bay book. We can also receive Kuan Yin lineage crown chakra blessings. And um, I forget, I wrote it down, but I don't recall. But all Kuan Yin lineage holders now have the ability, Master Shaw said, we can give remote crown chakra blessings now. And uh, the fourth one is higher level blessings. There are many. One of the ones that the last time I was on a Friday night here, uh, I offered the divine egg for soul, heart, mind, intelligence blessing. Um, that's something that uh, eight of us received, not, not the same one. Well, received what was called the divine egg blessing because it was Easter. And so it was like Easter egg, but it was from the divine. So it was a divine egg. Mine was for soul, heart, mind, intelligence. Now, think of that for a minute. Soul, heart, mind. Where have you heard that? Shen? Shen Chi Jing? <coughs> so soul, heart, mind. There are other higher level blessings too. Cough, stir. Susan's my throat. So um, if you had your eyes closed or were looking away, I just took a, a short little drink of cough, sir. So I'm going to offer another blessing. And um, this will be a demonstration blessing. In um, in Da Chang Sha, in the where they show up in a, several books. Master Shaw has given us four sacred mantras that expand the meaning of Da Chang Sheng. Um, Chi Da Chang Sheng, the seventh of the ten Da qualities, is greatest flourishing. Dao Si Ying Fu, Dao bestows, Dao Source bestows huge prosperity and blessing. In fact, I offered this from, uh, from a Dao hands blessing, might have been divine, to Paula. I was thinking of that the other day. Paula may remember it was years ago, three or four years ago, maybe more. The, th the third line is Sheng Shan Ji Du, offer kind service and accumulate good virtue. And the fourth one, Dao Ya Chang Sheng. Some of you have the NFT calligraphy, uh, Dao Ya Chang Sheng. Um, and if you were one of the few that went to Toronto uh, some years back, um, I'm forgetting the name of it now, but there was a booklet that was handed out to those of us that were in attendance, and it had a special Dao Ya Chang Sheng calligraphy in it, and we could honor at three different levels. And I was able to get all three of them into it. And I was like, wow. So what I'm going to offer tonight 
Uh, to those of you who would like to register, fine, but I'm going to offer a demonstration blessing for Dao Si Ying Fu. Dao, source, bestows huge prosperity and flourishing. Now, why would I do that? Because where'd it go? That must be, I hope that's it. Yes. So this is one of those ways to bring in prosperity. We bring in prosperity many different ways. We can do it ourselves if we're a Tao Hands practitioner. We don't have to be to use the calligraphies that are online. We can receive Kuan Yin lineage crown chakra blessings. I'm a one of the, there's I forget how many hundred now around the world uh, Kuan Yin lineage holders, um, and so you know we can offer these remotely anywhere in the world. And then uh, there's higher level blessings. For example, every Wednesday, I am just amazed at the power that Master Shaw is having his um, his master teachers offer on Wednesday every week. You can and the honor fee is a hundred dollars Canadian. Uh, wow, because you not only get this really high level download that only a few of the top level teachers can offer. Um, you also receive one month of Monday through Friday, an hour practice time, and you get to trace a calligraphy that you may never have seen and may never see again. It's a really high level Da I calligraphy, but it's normal in reverse creation. It has that line that goes up the backside. And I'm not going to show any of those. I've got three different calligraphies like that, but I'm not going to show them. I hear it wouldn't be appropriate. So this is what you can do. And if you would like to be the demo for a blessing, Dao Su Ying Fu, then I invite you to put a number between one and 75 over in the chat room. Any chance someone knows honoring fee for current Dao Hands calligraphy? Um, I'm, I'm, there's, Kat, please uh, email me later uh, with more detail because there's several different answers I could give you and I don't know which one would be the one you're asking about. Okay, so I'm seeing two numbers, three numbers, 25, 31, 71, and I'm getting the number that I can show you, and I'm folding it so the other one doesn't show up. Okay. One, two, three, four, five, six. And there's still 11 people here. It's really interesting to me to notice how many people come to different events um, and the kinds of things that occur that, um, that influence or may influence um, who comes and who doesn't. And I've learned just like, wow, that's really interesting. Wonder why, and without any attachment. Uh, I am frustrated. I'm not going to use whiteboard again. This, I'm waiting. I'm talking while I'm waiting for the rest of you to post. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Okay, I'm going to count down and then I'll show you the number because I've got it right here. You couldn't see it that fast, I don't think. It's really amazing to me how sometimes people will... Um, I remember one time back in the old days when Master Shaw didn't come on webcast, we'd be on a telephone on a Sunday afternoon for two hours or three hours or four hours or five hours. And once it went seven hours, it was amazing. One day as I was getting used to his energy, 
after about three hours and a half, I didn't want to hang up, but I had to. I couldn't handle the energy anymore. Um, and over a three months, was it three months? I think it was only two months. I was selected because uh, he did a demo blessing uh, every Sunday. I was selected three different times. It was just amazing. Um, later on, I got a reading as to why, and every one of them was saving my life. <laughs> so sometimes things will go in threes. So, okay, um, I am officially closing the um, the ability to, to uh, write in there. And whoever is closest to 47 is, that's the number that I had written. So somebody want to look through those and, and tell me, because sometimes I can't add and subtract well. Looks like Stephanie Cannon with 44. I was looking at that and you know, thank you, Sharon. So Stephanie, congratulations. I wow, think thank you. <laughs> the third time for you in the last month or so. Thank you, Terry. And thank you, Divine. Because I am in a situation that's challenging and I just I really appreciate the help really sincerely. <laughs> well, it it's obvious that heaven is hearing and offering to you. So mm -hmm. this is Dao Su Ying Fu. And pardon me while I turn my back on you. Oh because I hadn't picked up the, the um, this is my set of, of cards. Where's Da Chang Chang? Come on, one more. There it is. I gotta put this back. So everyone who's here will receive a blessing. And uh, pardon me while I shuffle through these cards because I had picked, I had looked at the wrong one. Um, I've got them mixed up. <laughs> That's why. There we go. All right. So I invite you all to close your eyes, put a hand on the heart chakra or both hands on the lower body. If you've got one hand on a heart chakra, put the other one on your lower abdomen. That's ideal. Um, and all you have to do is request, dear heaven, I would like the flash while Stephanie receives the whole nine yards. That's an old... American term, meaning the whole load, all of it, 100%. So this is not a tracing. This is a, sorry, I'm rearranging my card so I can see it. This is a Tao Healing Hands transmission from Tao Da Da I. Dow hands, my, my transmission. So this will be a blinding flash <laughs> uh, and it won't go on for two minutes. So Stephanie, I invite you and everyone else who'd like to receive Dow Su Ying Fu. Dao source read it again, bestows huge prosperity and blessing. So I'm invoking my Tao hands, saying thank you. And thanking Master Shaw for giving and making these available to us. And please offer Stephanie Cannon, blessing Tao Si Yang Fu, as appropriate. Blessing begins. It's not going to be just a blinding flash. It's going to go on for a little longer than I thought. One full minute.
Obviously, it's a silent blessing. How, how, how blessing ends. I'm thanking the Tao and the Tao hands transmission. What was uh, your experience? Um, anyone who'd care to share? And you may be half knocked out. Stephanie, go ahead. Mm -hmm. I just experienced a bit more light through my crown and my head, and uh, I'm, I'm just grateful. Thank you. Wonderful. What I experienced was uh, several things. Um, first, my body was shaking, um, and that's what occurs when there's a whole lot of energy running through me, uh, much more than usual. Um, and there were several other phenomena that occurred that I can't even recall because I, I really went out of consciousness for a little bit. That was a huge blessing that came through. So um, our team has posted over in the chat room. Uh, do, 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 there it is. So Dow Healing Hands... Oh, this was supposed to be an ambassador blessing. No wonder it came through <laughs> what I'm hearing. I'm I'm feeling a smile. It's like it went through that way. <laughs> no wonder I'd get shaken around. Um, for Dow stars bestowing huge prosperity and flourishing. So the honor fee registration fee is 100 US uh, country discounts. Uh, as usual, and uh, there's a whole list of country discounts, India, Mexico, Central America, South America, Caribbean islands um, have a 50% discount, and then Australia and Canada get a 30% discount, and in case you don't do it in your head for 30%, or thought it was only 30%, um, the number's listed there. So you can PayPal me um, if you'd like to later if you'd like to receive it now. Um, and I'm seeing this is a post on down there. So let me scroll down and read it. Ah, thank you, loveness. So let me let me recap. These are keys that are available. They're everywhere, not everywhere, but they're accessible to each of you. One is awareness, and you've received flashes, blessings for awareness tonight, and information, so the mind can go, oh, really? I wasn't aware of that. So our negative beliefs that we need to do better, that we don't deserve it, that we don't know enough, um, that we don't believe people will believe us. I had to deal with that one for six or seven years. Um, I'm still, I'm still working my way up to um, people that I think of as that at a you know a level that I don't believe they will believe me. So it's ongoing. Uh, the second thing is we may not be benefiting others enough. So the first one is internal. The second one is external. And Ginger was knocked out. That was a big blessing, yeah. So we have to, and, and you know, if you, do, can you, uh, I'm ask. let me ask our team, would you please repost the free offer that Alan gave? Um, because it's all about the benefit to others. We need to know what our value is. We need to recognize it and accept it. And 
uh, we need to communicate that to the listener. We need to offer enough. For example, my mind said, well, it must be Dao Da Da I. And then I'm wondering, that was the biggest Dao Da Da I blessing that's come through me. And then I see here, no, this is, uh, this is uh, Dao Han's ambassador level, <coughs> which explains why I was being shaken around. So we also need to ask enough people. Alan's course woke me up to my big, big, big blockages because I was afraid to niche down. So I am my my funnel program, that's web doc marketing, is focused on realtors and realtors who have children at home and they want to be at home with them. So, you know, when you look at all of the realtors and you start, well, children, children at home, and they want to be home with them, some of them are blocking themselves from even thinking about it. I know. Uh, I was there. So for those of you who don't know, I was a realtor for 22 years. Sold a lot of homes. Was not home much. I worked 60 hours a week. It was so important to me that I neglected my family. Must have done something right. My wife and son loved me. But um, so I'm focusing on that small group. Well, so what, you may be saying. There aren't very many of those out there. So what I need to do is spread my message wider. And that's, that's the key, one of the keys anyway, for niche. And Alan knows it inside and out. I mean, he's a top pro at this. He was he earned his living that way. And now he's, well, check his 60-minute, uh, what's he called? A 60-minute workshop shows you how to launch your spiritual healing business using a heart-centered approach. And remember the importance of the heart. Got to get out of the head. So tonight, tonight can be the first, or tomorrow can be the first day of the rest of your life as you increase your financial flourishing. <coughs> Both Paula and Stephanie, they've got just so much more light than they did a whole bunch of, I'm reaching for my uh, cough syrup because I'm going to take another slug of that here about in another minute or so. So for those of you who are still here, thank you for coming. <coughs> and for those who weren't, I apologize for whatever the blockage was mine or theirs, especially those that just didn't even come, mine or theirs. <coughs> so thank you all for coming. And uh, next Friday, I don't know who the presenter is, but we welcome you back. And until then, goodbye from Portland or aloha. Night. Thank you, everyone. Thank you, Jerry. Love you. Love you, everyone. So glad you came. Aloha. Bye bye. Thank Aloha. You, everyone.